Are we okay in starting? Hi, good afternoon. I hope uh, everyone is seated or about to get seated. Um, I'm going to talk about creating more relevant search results with Learn to Rank. Um, my name is Nick Feenhoff. You can see there's like an and and an or uh, together with Matthias Michaud. Um, it looks like a query, uh, uh, but the reason for that is that my girlfriend could call me any moment to go to the hospital to um, get the baby. So if I run away, <laughs> apologies, apologies. Uh, Matthias is over there, so if you see him running, uh, he can take over. We practiced this session, uh, well, we both of us practiced it because I didn't know I was going to be here today. Um, so for that. Maybe a little bit of history about myself. Um, I've been involved with the Drupal project for over 12 years now. Um, currently work for Drop Solid as the CTO there. And uh, started with uh, Apache Solar as an internship with Acquia to port the Drupal 6 module to Drupal 7. Then I got involved with Search API uh, to merge the two projects. Um, so it has been like a, a pet project slash my job for quite a while now. Now, uh, before we can do any of this, we need to understand a little bit of the basic concepts of uh, machine learning. Um, I won't go into too scientific depths, depth, but um, we'll get started by a little example. So this is a uh, Drupal.org search, and I uh, try to search for install Apache. Uh, I'm a new user. Uh, I want to figure out how to run Drupal. Uh, today, there's this command uh, to run Drupal, but most of the cases, you still have a LAMP stack. But for some reason, this is the first page. The second result is actually about this session. That's not very relevant, um, because most likely when you search for install Apache, you're searching for something like this. Yeah? So how do you increase that relevancy? How do you figure out in Drupal itself uh, towards maybe Solar, which is like a, a backend component that you can use to optimize this, uh, to put that result more to the top? Um, why was this created, or, or why did this uh, session happen? Um, I went to FOSDEM in the beginning of the year. FOSDEM is a massive open source conference, um, sponsored uh, and attended by people from Mozilla, Google, really, really big companies, small companies, massive conference in Brussels. Um, and there, there was a, um, a presentation about learn to rank uh, within Solar and Lucene. And at the same time, or just a little later, there was a case of a hospital in Belgium that came with a question, uh, our search is really, really bad. Um, it's made in Drupal, but we don't know how to improve it. Um, and then there was a little tool with that presentation in FOSDEM where you could get it uh, connected to the solar index. You can click on the results that were relevant or not relevant. That's already a good start. So this is a search result as is. Ideally, these three float to the top. Uh, that's the basics. Now, uh, uh, we have the wonderful Umami demo, and uh, I'll explain that also later, and hopefully also do a live demo, um, where we have imported a bunch of recipes, um, because the default of Umami doesn't come with enough content to actually do the learning, where uh, we have chocolate cake as a use case, and I don't want the hazelnut icebox case. I actually just want the regular chocolate cake as the first result. Most likely, that's what we want to search for. Um, this is a hypothetical example. And you can translate that in your head to uh, maybe another real life example. So here's the current situation. Um, let's see. Uh, so if we search for uh, chocolate cake in the Zumami demo. We see the hazelnuts, the flowerless, etc. There's also like a Halloween cake. Uh, maybe that's very relevant for this week. Um, and you can see in, in the module that we'll explain later, you can actually rank these uh, results from the site builder's perspective. Could also be maybe from the user's perspective. That's something that permission could solve. So uh, today, this is not ideal. Maybe also to give you a bit of insight into the statistics, um, and we'll dive into what it means uh, also in a bit. The top 10 results from everything that we ranked as may relevant, or at least like that we want to see, so that's the third number that you see on the screen, 95% uh, yeah, of these results appear in the top 10. But actually from the top five, 
only 75% in that top five were rated as relevant. So let's try in this session to improve that. Um, you could think of that chocolate cake that needs to float to the top, but then across all the results. Okay. Now, back to some theory. Uh, what is machine learning? Um, I don't know if I ask 10 people here in the room, I probably would get 10 different answers, and that's totally valid. Huh? Um, if I do the same question with artificial intelligence, I would even get more diverse answers. Um, but it's basically a subset of uh, artificial intelligence where based on training data, you get um, or you try to achieve a certain result and whatever is generated in the middle to get that, to that result is a model uh, without if else statements to explicitly do that task. Sounds simple. Right? For example, uh, facial recognition, the CAPTCHA stuff, uh, that's all machine learning. Traditional machine learning, um, and this is a bit how I got into this concept. Um, I also worked for Acquia in the past, and uh, also for Mollum. And Mollum was an anti-spam service. For example, if you type in some text, uh, and it was deemed in the training data as spammy, it would be classified uh, as a classifier and with a certain score, and say, oh, nope, you're probably spam. Um, this is very traditional prediction machine learning. What um, we are going to try to do here is very different. It's not that we get a set of uh, keywords with a single answer uh, based on a training data set. No, you have a keyword, there's results, and based on the training data, we know that certain results have a higher value. Um, so learning to rank as a subset uh, or class of techniques to apply supervised machine learning uh, because it's with training to solve these ranking problems. Okay, so far so good. Yeah. I won't go too much in depth, but you need to understand these basic concepts before we can go back to Drupal. Uh, they, they did some research and they figured out uh, RankNet. And in the bottom, you see an example on how Spotify um, does a match between you and someone that has a very similar music taste. How can you figure that out? And they try to find out what is the, the techniques or what are the musics that you listen to. Um, what is the combined um, difference between you and someone else? Because that makes you similar. And then maybe you can uh, propose similar music taste because they figure out that you have similar music taste and they can propose music. And so the inversions in ranking, that's called. Um, but they did some more iterations, uh, agile working, uh, with Lambda Rank, Lambda Mart. And, and here it's actually where it becomes important for our use case. Um, in this case, we're trying to figure out uh, how much of the result is from the actual result uh, when we try to replicate that specific search query. So these arrows you see, uh, the, the bigger the red arrow, the higher the cost of putting it on top. You don't need to know anything else for this. Uh, this is the basics. Um, back to Drupal and Solar. Um, how many of you have worked with uh, the Drupal in combination of Search API or maybe in Drupal 7, the Apache Solar module? Uh, I probably should reverse the question. How many have not? Nobody. Everyone worked with that module. Awesome. Um, there's an issue in the core ID queue to get it into core yeah, if you want to help. Um, but there's also like an elastic search module. Um, in practice and in theory, it's the same. It's all powered by Lucene. And there's a couple of concepts. And so um, there's a document. The document contains a field. And the field is made of types. The type could be a full text or a number or a string. Um, and they're normalized by processors. A processor could mean, oh, I see uh, a word. Um, and I know that word can be split into two. Uh, for example, in Dutch, there is a word called Ereloon supplement, for those that understand Dutch. Um, and that word could be split into Ereloon and supplement. Um, this is something quite tricky to do because then you get into the natural language processing uh, stuff. But that's why you use technologies like Lucene um, to do this for you. Don't try to do this in Drupal. It's not made for that. All of this is stored in an index, and each document is by default standalone. Um, it's 
very different from a regular database because in a database you have connections or relations. Uh, in this case, you don't have relations. You have a single document uh, for a result. Um, this has a wild card. There are cases uh, in uh, Solar where you could refer or relate to things, but then it could be used for personalized search, which is a different use case. 99% um, of you probably stayed with a single document. Now uh, this index is created uh, so that tokens could be generated and then you have a reverse document based on a word. You find out where is this word located. Ah, this is the document and you return that document. Okay. Maybe to get some uh, Solar 101 um, with the query. I don't know if many of you looked into the Solar uh, log or saw the raw query. Um, I suppose they're a little less hands if I ask that. So let's go through um, a generated query of search API solar 8.x, 3.x. Um, in this case, uh, we're searching for cookies. So you can see there is a queue parameter and there's cookies a little bit further. Um, we limit the search purely on whatever we generate from uh, a search API processor called uh, rendered item. Um, but I also want to find out if it's in the title. Um, the rendered item is one in importance, the title is five, so it's five to one ratio in importance. Um, okay, so then uh, we, also, we can see how heavily we need to boost each item. Um, in Search API Solar 3.x, it was added into a separate um, item. And then um, we also want to tell Solar, I want to return the ID, the score, which is how relevant it is. And then I want to return the title and the URL. All right, so far so good. Um, because Search API Solar allows you to index multiple items or the same item multiple times in different indexes in the same Solar core, uh, that's a little tricky, you can limit it uh, to say, I only want to see this index from this hash. Even if you, for example, um, add all the, index, all, all the content in one Solar core for development, staging, and production, you could limit it for this site and this specific environment. Um, the ideal case or the best practice is to have separate ones. Eh? Um, and then at the end, okay, I want to return 10. Okay, all still following? So uh, what is relevant? Eh? Um, I want you to think a bit about this concept. Um, if you start to create search pages in uh, Drupal, how do you configure Drupal to show you the most relevant results? If you take the restaurants as an example, when searching for a restaurant, what is the criteria that makes a certain restaurant appealing? Um, I'm not entirely sure if someone can shout an idea. What kind of criteria would make a restaurant interesting? Uh, I, can, I don't know if this will work. There's like this microphone. Who wants to answer? Good food. Good food. And how do you see good food in your index? Maybe with a rating. Yeah, so the, the rating of a restaurant could be a very interesting factor. So if we do this with articles and recipes and pages, um, this is an example that I made. You could have the amount of tags. For example, how many ingredients do you have? And the freshness, uh, not necessarily the ingredient freshness, but how, more or how recent an art, uh, a recipe was added. Um, you could have more, for example, how many comments were added to a specific article or a restaurant. Um, but the, all of these things are concepts that today in, in Drupal and in Solar and Search API are not really thought of. Um, so you could use these factors as extra relevancy numbers to boost the relevancy. Now, uh, luckily in, in Solar uh, 6.5 and 7, this was added, um, and it's part of the, the whole concept of learn to rank. Um, you can add, instead of just one score field, you can add multiple score fields. Uh, the regular score is based on a string within the whole text. This are features, uh, and it's also called like this, feature definitions, to say, okay, this is from a description, this is the amount of tags, these are the amount of comments, this is the rating or the common rating of a specific restaurant. And you could even go in, in a little bit craziness of doing ratings per individual and then have personalized uh, search because the relevancy will be different based on an individual, okay? 
back to Drupal. Um, the database best practices can be found at Drupal. Uh, Drupal search, Dutch, uh, it's not really pronounceable, just say Drupal search. Um, and the code could be found at GitHub. Um, it was an effort, a combined effort of the, the search ecosystem maintainers um, and a couple of sprints in previous events to have an example. But the database best practices are different from the solar best practices. So let me give you a little uh, sneak preview on uh, what I think are the solar best practices. It's okay to differ in opinion, obviously. Um, but if you want to index uh, your content, you should probably stay as close as possible as to what Google does. Um, you index the whole content. You probably shouldn't care too much about specific fields. Don't try to add fields into the index that are not um, visible in a sense, except for maybe uh, meta tags or th those kind of things. So there's an easy processor to say, okay, um, I want my rendered item. I want to see it as anonymous. Um, and I want to have a specific view mode because maybe you don't want the labels to show if you use view modes in that way. Be careful of layout builder. It can have uninten like unintended side effects or consequences. If you do layout builder on an individual basis, so you have different variations per content, you won't be able to index blocks that you add through layout builder uh, with the rendered item. Uh, so this is a discussion we still need to have. Um, if Google can see your meta tags, why shouldn't your index see your meta tags? Um, if you have keywords that you add, even though maybe Google doesn't always go to those keywords or doesn't support them anymore, it could be a very important feature for you to say, on these keywords, I want to increase my relevancy. Um, so there's a patch for meta tag to enable it to be seen in search API in the index uh, as a field. Okay. All the other fields that you add, are probably not very useful, except for if you want to show them as facets, as filters on the side, or you want to use them in the feature definition for the machine learning model, okay? And then uh, in views itself, there's a bunch of different parse modes. Um, I suggest you use the multiple words with edismax. Um, then you can get the query as I showed earlier. Um, yeah, these are the fields that you want to, ser to search for because you index those two, uh, the title and the aggregated field. There's a couple of processors you can enable, uh, the highlight filter um, to show a little snippet and to show where the word was seen in that snippet. There's the HTML filter. You don't want to get HTML into that index. I'm not sure if you ever want to search for the strong tag. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kind of site you're building then, but probably not. Uh, content itself. Um, and you could add maybe some type specific boosting to say that a blog is more important than a news article or vice versa. And then there's a little trickiness there, uh, how to get that little snippet in that view to, to see, okay, Solar did the query, it probably found a document, and it can also show where in that document it found the keywords that you were relating to. So, um, here in Search API Index, um, you enable these two boxes of retrieve result data from Solar, get the highlighted snippets, and then in the, the view, you uh, do another checkbox of create excerpt, uh, even if there's no keys available, otherwise you get empty snippets. Um, and then you say, okay, from which fields do you want them? Um, okay, and then in the field itself, you can uh, add it to the search excerpt uh, or to the, the fields. Um, you can even do, okay, instead of showing the whole view mode in there, you do uh, the fields in views and say, okay, I want to see the rendered item as a view mode, as a field, and then add the excerpt because it doesn't come from Drupal, it comes from Solar. And then there's another checkbox that you need to do, use highlight field data. I think this process probably should be simplified a bit, um, but it's certainly possible. So, back to learn to rank. Uh, we have the best practices of uh, Drupal and uh, Solar. And uh, this is the case that I was talking about of the hospital where we did this training and say, okay, this is the keyword that I added and um, these are the results that the customer um, clicked on and say, this is relevant, this is not relevant, this is relevant, this is not relevant. And after a little while, we were able to make statistics on 
uh, how well our search index was performing. So before applying these best practices, um, and maybe to, to add a little context there, this was also Drupal 7, uh, so it was a, a different case. Um, we were at 49% of items we expected in the top five that were actually in the top five. So that's the recall parameter. Um, if we take a look at the top 10, it's actually quite disappointing because it only added 6% like of relevant results in the top 10. So that means that 45% of the results that were expected didn't show up in the first page. Um, if you take a look at the statistics of Google, uh, you probably just click away if you don't see it on the first page. Um, there's kind of like a, a, probably a support group of people that actually click through page two in Google. It's the same on your Drupal site. After the optimizations, without the learning to rank algorithm, we got it up to, this is Google, okay, uh, to 85, uh, sorry, 76%. Um, so just by applying the best practices uh, within Drupal. Um, and then for the top 10, it went up from 55 to 81%. This is without the machine learning. Eh? Um, if we then apply the machine learning model, we actually got up until 85%, uh, and in the top 10 to 91%. Um, so that's quite a huge boost, um, resulting in, in a lot less, like a lot fewer support calls towards that hospital. So you can see uh, there was a, um, a tool built for this, um, inspired on the FOSDEM talk that I saw, uh, where you see all these different parameters uh, by keyword. Um, so in a sense, you really go into depth into your search uh, relevancy optimization by mathematics. Um, you don't say, okay, from this word, I want to see that on the top. From that word, I want to see that on the top. Because if you start to optimize your search in that way, you probably will get lost in the long run, um, and it won't be very performance as well. All right, so as we saw, the recall, uh, the recall should be nearing 100% as much as possible. Uh, so from all the relevant results that we ranked, how many of those did I see on that first page? Um, if you wanna uh, find some more info or detail, there's a lot of resources out there to show this. So with this rank clip library uh, that we had in the theory in the, in the beginning, um, we can actually generate a model and it's natively supported by Solar. So you generate a JSON file and I'll show the, the model in a bit. Uh, you just uploaded it to a REST API endpoint from Solar itself uh, and you can enable it. So um, let's take a look at such a model. I'm gonna scroll quite quickly. This is a, a JSON model uh, from the Umami site that was generated. And th the main thing that you should see is that there's no keywords in there. There is no reference to any node ID, entity ID, whatever. Um, nothing like chocolate cake or any of that stuff. The only thing that it shows is the features that we defined and the optimizations on how it generated that model towards those features depending on the result. Um, okay. How do you then apply this in Solar? It's very simple. You add one parameter to that same query. It's the RQ parameter. You say the query words, chocolate cake, for example, and then the model that was generated by that tool. Um, and it essentially means that you are re-ranking from the 100 results that you see in the, in the first 100 um, using the model. You re-rank those 100 results um, to then get a new result, okay? There's a, a Drupal module uh, out there also called Search API LTR, where um, there's a Drush command to generate the model you can see the model in Search API itself, select it. Um, you can train it in the view itself to then re-rank your results uh, in real time. So how can you do this? It's out there. Um, the hard part of this is to define the feature sets. You need to figure out what your data model is um, and what is more relevant towards you. Uh, there's no magic bullet. 
So if we then apply that in the results, and we'll do that in the demo as well, um, you can see that it, from the three green ones that we, we selected, uh, they used to be like uh, a bit of everywhere, they were floating, or now they're floating to the top. The, the really nice thing of this method is that it doesn't use any keywords, so it also means that for future keywords, it will still use that model, and it will try to predict what is relevant. So even if you only train half of the keywords that you, you think are really important, most likely the rest of your search results will also become more relevant. Um, all right, let's see a little demo. So here we see the statistics. Um, and I switched the, the numbers a little bit, so the recall of the top five is on the left. We see that from all the results that I deemed as important, um, you can see that here. I added a whole bunch of words in this tool to see the statistics. 75% um, of those flow to the top five. All right. So. Let's see about our chocolate cake. So this flowerless chocolate cake, I think, is very relevant. Um, a little ajax -y thing happening. Um, and because it's Halloween, I also think this uh, creepy crawly cake is very relevant. If we then go to the, um, the back end of the Search API interface, there you can see there's a little tab added. Um, and here in the bottom, is the, the result of what uh, I just selected as relevant or not relevant. So you remember the machine learning uh, part where you have a training data set? This is your training data set, okay? And I think here, you see added as the last part, it's a little tricky to see here, chocolate cake has two results that were added. All right, so then with, um, Drush, you can have a command, um, and you define the view where you did the training, because in Search API, uh, or in Drupal itself, you basically create search pages using views, so the page that you wanna trigger to train from, uh, or to create your model from, is a view, and a specific display ID. So in this case, it's the search view with page one. Um, it will execute all the searches that I did, including chocolate cake, it will look at the training data to see what is relevant, what is not. It will also look at the um, scores of all these different features and then send it to the RankClip uh, Java library to um, generate the model, upload it into uh, Solar using the Drupal APIs. So now uh, you can see it was added. Um, and if we take a look here, You can see now there's like a second model. Uh, sorry for the, the screen, um, but I'll apply it. And let's see if our chocolate cake has a different result. All right, very cool. Because now I have the flourless chocolate cake on top, the creepy cr crawly cake in the second one. You can see that even though I ranked it as highly relevant, it doesn't go to all the top because it needs to take in, uh, into account all the other search query words. Uh, so the, the model needs to be generic enough for all the keywords to work. Um, if we then take a look at our statistics, um, and this is a part that isn't in Drupal itself, uh, we're intending to also port it towards Drupal, you can see that now from the top five results, 91% of what we marked as relevant is in that top five. Um, if we take a look uh, at the top 10, it doesn't really make any sense because we don't have enough results, so it always will be close to 95. Um, but for the top five, this is very important. And now we actually optimized the relevancy or we optimized the search pages based on feedback, based on training data. It created a model, um, and using that model, we re-rank the results real time to show more relevant results in the top five of our search pages. Um, so that's awesome, no? Yeah, this tool also allows you 
um, to quickly check the difference. Well, so here, chocolate cake was the original. Um, here you can see the difference. All right. If we have time, we can maybe try like a live keyword from someone in the audience, uh, if you don't believe me with this uh, uh, sample set. Um, but that's basically the, the conclusion. So we really optimized the search relevancy of this thing. So we compiled this learning set. We trained a model and uploaded this result to Solar. Um, it's natively supported from Solar 6.5. If you want to use this in Elasticsearch, um, you have to recompile uh, Elasticsearch. You have to enable certain flags to get it up and running. Um, so I'm not saying it's impossible, but you will have to work a little bit against the stream. Um, we use this model during our queries in real time to re-rank these results based on the trained model. So we always ask what's the original search, and then you change the, the order. Um, but it's insanely important to have this good data model first, which means getting all the basics on search covered first. Um, it doesn't make any sense to start doing this if you don't have that basic stuff covered. Um, so in, in order to do that also for Drop Solid, which is the company I work for, we enable and allow this out of the box um, for the machine learning. There's a couple of switches you need to do in Solar itself um, to get this end-to-end uh, -end running. And then, uh, Obviously, the, the company pitch, uh, if you got interested after this talk to work with us, uh, we're hiring. Uh, come see me if you're up for challenges like this. Now, um, also help us move Drupal forward. You saw in the previous session in the keynote uh, that there's a lot of help needed. As Drop Solid, we intend to uh, do our part. There's a little survey you can fill in. And uh, in order, like as an exchange, we will donate 15 minutes of uh, time to a core contributor uh, by paying someone those 15 minutes. Um, I think the counter is uh, all, like above 1,000 minutes already. And then um, I'm also part of the organizing team of Drupal Developer Days. Uh, it will happen from 6th to 10th of April in 2020. Um, maybe we can all uh, sprint together on search-related uh, items or on other related uh, initiatives, um, but in our hometown. So hope to see you there. And then uh, also tonight there is a Splash Awards. I'm also part of this uh, initiative. So I'm also hoping to see uh, all of you there. Um, or maybe some of you already entered a case where maybe you could win. Um, I was also reminded by Baris that there is a dinner for strangers uh, tonight. And I think you can still sign up. He's the green person over there. Sign up before five. So with that, we still have around like 10 minutes-ish uh, left. So I would open up the floor for some questions, uh, if there's any. We have these little boxes that I can throw that feature as speakers. Does it work? Yeah. OK. And there's another box over there. So you can throw it already to the next uh, person who has a question. Yeah. Um, question there. So uh, this is just. Uh, rearranging the position. It's not filtering the data, these models. Correct. So you will always have the same data. It will just re-rank, as it says, the data. Um, maybe the other box if, or yeah, there's another. Yeah, just throw it to some hands. Uh, I think for the person here in front, there was a blue box over there as well. Uh. Hi. Hi. Uh, just going to sit down. Yeah, uh, uh, the metrics that you are using is uh, precision at K and then recall at K. Uh, have you tried to use the other metrics like uh, map at K, means of rest precision, or NDGS? So the, the RankLib uh, library uh, offers a couple of algorithms to try. Um, I can maybe show it here in, in the code. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to see, and I don't know how, like, how I can really zoom in here. But there is RankNet, RankBoost, um, AdaRank, Coordinate Ascent. Uh, Lambda Mart, ListNet, and Random Forest is also linear regression. Those 
models or those algorithms could be used in this library. Um, when testing them, I found the best results uh, with Lambda Mart and then a specific uh, parameter called NDCG at 10. Um, but it's up to you to experiment with that. Uh, it doesn't really matter for Solar. It accepts any of these formats. I don't know if that's an answer to your question. Yeah, yeah my, my, uh, you kind of like partly answer the questions. Like, uh, because you are using the NDGS, right? That's yeah. the metric to calculate the, sorry, uh, to calculate the relevancy of the result, usually yeah. for the relevancy. But then your presentation is you are uh, using precision and recall. So it's kind of like I'm a bit confused about it because it doesn't match between. I'm happy to listen to you in terms of the mathematical side okay. of that. Um, this is also how I learned it. So maybe yeah. it's wrong. And then hopefully I can correct it for the next one. Um, yeah, then I'll talk to you after this. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect. Come up afterwards. Uh, Hello. Hi. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering uh, how much content uh, would this be useful for? I mean, you showed uh, the Umami has only 10 uh, uh, pages. Uh, starting off, uh, how many pages would this be uh, useful for? Um, that's also a good question. It also depends on how often your search pages are used. Um, it could be very useful to look into Google Analytics how long people stay in your search pages. Um, if you don't get the conversion from those search pages as you expect, most likely this could help. Um, and then it doesn't really matter how many items you have. Um, obviously, if you only show 10 results and you only have 10 items, then it doesn't make any sense. Eh? Um, except for maybe you want to float it to the top, but I think with some Drupal-specific optimizations, you could already solve that. I have another question. <laughs> Maybe also uh, for, for answering that, if you yeah. use the database backend and it's good enough for you, then you cannot use this, so then that's also kind of an answer. Uh, I, I also had, a, if, uh, if it's okay, another question. Um, what, what happens if, uh, if a content is uh, rewritten? Uh, would that be re-indexed? Uh, and would that matter for the, uh, uh, for the indexing of? Uh um, it doesn't matter because the model is not based on keywords. It's not based on content. Um, even if you add new content, uh, delete content, the model will stay active and present. Um, that's why it's more interesting than adding the, or using the elevate.xml file in Solar, because that uses specific document IDs to float to the top for certain keywords, and that's not very maintainable. Uh, Thank you. There's more questions. I see another hand there. I don't know if there's more. Uh, yeah, go ahead. OK. Um, so I assume that uh, users can affect the rating uh, globally, so that it affects for the results for every, everyone else as well. So uh, there's a couple of things you could do there, I guess. I, I don't know if your question was finished already. No, it oh, wasn't. Sorry. So if it was like this, um, I've learned, learned before that uh, if you let users to do that kind of thing globally, they will input like anything, like something that is not relevant or, or is like a crap. So do you have any ideas to work around that? What I showed is for the, the site builder, yeah. so not necessarily for the user of the site, okay. uh, the yeah. visitor. You All could, right. for example, use Google Analytics to see what results were clicked on uh, based on certain words and create your own training data set based on that. Um, it, the module itself doesn't give you any assumption on how you generate this field. It's a JSON file with document IDs. Um, it generates a model for that. Um, these little things are just a helper for site builders. OK, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, I was wondering, you, you showed um, a lot of examples that have to do with keywords. Um, but what if users prefer newer content over older content? Would the system also be able to learn from that? Yes, so this is what I showed here in the, um, the feature schema. So here's a feature called freshness. Um, so it adds another relevancy factor to freshness of content. And uh, because you train the data, the model will learn how important freshness is to you. Um, Usually, you also can add this as an extra query uh, in Solar itself, so as the base query. And then rel like more recent content will always be more relevant. And only after that, you re-rank the results based on a model. Um, 
So maybe to reiterate, it doesn't remove you from doing crazy things with your query. It only re-ranks the result that comes from that original query. Uh, thanks. Hopefully that was uh, yeah. an answer. Thanks. Maybe one last question, or two last questions. Over there. A couple more minutes. Behind you. Uh, you said that it w should be trained for view pages. Uh, can it be trained by uh, for the custom page with a search API uh, API? Yeah. Um, you could, but then you're responsible yourself uh, how you can get those bullets in there or how you can get that JSON data. Um, so in the sense, the, the view that comes with the module, this is just another field uh, added in the view. So you can see this is the title, this is a snippet, and this is the relevancy field in the view. If you can figure out how to do that for custom pages, by all means, if you somehow generate this yourself, because you know which items or which content items are more important, also feel free. Uh, that's why it's an open text box, and um, I really want this stuff to be in as little black box as possible, even though it's quite complicated uh, material. Hopefully that was uh, an answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Maybe one last question behind you. Yeah, hi. Hi. So, uh, so in a project architecture wherein we are not using the fully coupled system, so wherein I'm not using the Drupal search API and just specifically using the Elasticsearch, yeah. so the rank up would not be the most applicable in those system. So what would you suggest for the most relevancy search in that case? And you're indexing using Drupal or you're indexing uh, somehow differently? I know, just using some libraries independently, not using the Drupal search index. Um, if you somehow index it by crawling, um, uh, then it's gonna be tricky because you need to be similarly smart as Google to figure out the metadata uh, to get structured information Mm -hmm. to then do relevancy boosting based on that structured data, uh, like um, the, the date when it was created and those kind of things. Yeah. Um, if you figure out how to get that structured data, you mm -hmm. can probably do boosting in Elasticsearch on that structured data. And then if you're going to want to go crazy, you can recompile Elasticsearch and use the re-ranking capabilities uh, with the model and you train, but you have to all do all these steps yourself. Um, okay. So it might get tricky. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, thank you so much for your attention. Hopefully this was useful. And uh, see you around. I didn't get a baby yet. So.